What's up you guys? It's Alyssa and I am back. I made a video a few weeks back talking to you guys about some differences that I have noticed between Sweden and the United States. I have been living here in Sweden for almost four months now at this point, which is crazy because the time has honestly flown by. When I made that video, I think I had been here for around three months, but I have thought of so many more differences. <laughs> Like I said in that previous video, this is just simply my perspective, what I have noticed, things that are different to me versus what I'm used to back in the US. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to cover everything in one video, two videos. Honestly, I don't think I could ever encompass the true differences between here and the US because it really is like two completely different worlds. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about some differences that I have noticed in the past four months of living here in Sweden. The first thing I wanted to touch on that I didn't mention in my previous video, and I don't know how I didn't do that, but it is the topic of shoes. Before I came here to Sweden, all of the videos that I was watching were telling me about don't wear shoes in people's houses, you always take your shoes off, but there were so many more aspects to it that I truly didn't understand until I got here. In the US, I'm one that I practice a shoeless household. I really don't like shoes in my house, but I'm not one to tell people to take their shoes off. But here in Sweden, it doesn't matter if the house is completely hardwood, which they typically are, if there are carpets, if there are rugs, you do not wear your shoes into somebody else's house. You take your shoes off at the front door. That is something that I absolutely love about Sweden. Everybody thinks this is common sense. Obviously, you take your shoes off before you go into somebody else's house, but there are a few aspects aspects of it that I didn't consider. When I first got here to Sweden, my boyfriend and I went to a small get together and this was one of the environments that I didn't even think about taking my shoes off. You go to a house party, a pregame, anything like that, typically keep your shoes on. It was awesome to me that every single person in the house took their shoes off before they even walked in. There was like 30 pairs of shoes all in the front entryway, but I loved it. No matter what, if you go to somebody's house, you take your shoes off. Another huge difference, I've never seen anything like this, is when you go to the gym, you do not wear your outside shoes into the gym. You change your shoes from what you wore in the parking lot, what you wore in your car, what you wore walking, scootering. Whatever you wore before you walked into the gym is not what you are going to be wearing or not what you should be wearing while you are actually working out. In my gym specifically, you take your shoes off before you even walk through the lobby. I sometimes will wear them into the locker room and change there. They even have like little shoe covers that you would put over to walk through the lobby. This I understand because the weather here can be very mushy, it can be very muddy and dirty, and obviously they want to prolong the equipment and they want to keep everything clean for their gym members. So the idea of no shoes here in Sweden is not only at somebody else's house, but I've also seen it at gyms as well. The second difference that I have noticed here in Sweden is there is no AC. I have not been in an apartment yet, I have not heard of an apartment yet that has air conditioning in it. There are people that buy maybe window units or units that they can stick inside of their living room, people that buy fans, things like that, but there is typically no AC built into the homes here. There is heating. This was a huge shock to me because coming from Florida where AC is basically your lifeline to somewhere where they don't even have it was insane to me. I think this might have been one of my first questions that I asked when we were moving in. It was shocking then, but it's not shocking now. So just be prepared. If you plan on coming here in the summertime, it might be a good idea to invest in maybe a fan when you get here. I've seen people that have been here long term that buy their own air conditioning units like I mentioned previously. We decided not to get a fan and not to get an air conditioning unit because we were only here at the end of July and we're not gonna be here much longer when it gets warmer outside. You can just leave your window open, at night it cools off and you're only gonna be sweaty for a couple of nights. The next difference is doors and how they lock their doors. We had to be told how to lock our front door because of how different it is from the US. Again, it's nothing that I've ever seen before. Does that mean that it doesn't exist in the States? No, it could very well exist in the States. I just haven't seen it. Typically, when you lock the doors here, you have to grab the handle and pull it up and it clicks in place and then you lock it with your key. In the States, we're used to just putting the key in, locking it like that and you are good to go. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because in a lot of public bathrooms, they have the same idea of locking. They don't have a key or anything like that, but in order to lock the door when you're using the restroom, you have to grab the handle, lift it up and you will hear it click into place and that's what will lock the door. I mention this because if you're not aware if there are no stickers or if there's nothing that's flat out telling you how to do that, you're not gonna know how to lock the restroom door you might have a quite embarrassing intruder moment. Staying on track with the bathroom stalls, 
I know in the States it is an ongoing joke of how awkward it is when you are in a stall and you can see someone directly through three inch crack in the door. Here in Sweden, the majority of the doors do not have that crack. It is just like a door if you're going in and out of a room. I've even seen bathroom stalls that are essentially like their own separate rooms where the stall doors go floor to ceiling, no cracks underneath, no cracks in the side, and it is just, like I said, a little tiny room. You're still in the public bathroom per se, but you have much more privacy than I've seen in the US. Again, bathrooms, ladies, this is for you. The tampons here in Sweden, and I wanna generalize and say all of Europe, tampons do not have applicators. I have searched for boxes of tampons with applicators so I could talk to you guys about them, tell you where to find them, and I genuinely think I've only seen one box, but this is me saying I think. I don't even know for certain. It just kind of looked like it. So if you're coming over here for a long period of time or you are coming for vacation, make sure that you are packing your own tampons or you have the ability to order some off of Amazon. Laundry. I have talked to you guys about this in a few of my vlogs. I've shown you how we do it, but it is so different than the US. If you do not have a washing machine or laundry utilities in your apartment, you are most likely going to have to find your laundry room in your apartment building, book a time slot and that is the only time you will have to do your laundry until you change it again typically it's about a three or four hour period for us it's a four hour period where we go in we do all of our laundry there are two washers one industrial dryer and my favorite thing so far about Sweden is the line drying room. I have, again, I've shown you guys this in multiple vlogs of mine, so feel free to check those out. I'll have those linked. But what this is, is just a room with lines from wall to wall and a machine that blows air, warm air throughout the room, circulates and dries your clothes. It is perfect for anybody that loves Lululemon and I know Logan and I love our Lululemon, so that room is always full. Like I said, you are going to have to book your own time slot on a specific day. Typically, you will have a little like, I, I don't have it with me because it's downstairs in the little cork board, but you will have a lock and a key and you put the lock in a hole. It's a whole board of holes. Down will be the time, up top will be the dates. And say you wanna do laundry on the first of the month and you wanna do it at 7 a.m. You put it in the seven slot. It'll say like 7 a.m. till 11 a.m. on the first and you put it right in that hole, you lock it in there, and then you are good to go. That is your time. It says the apartment number that you are in on the little key thing. And nobody should be coming into the laundry room or the dryer room while you are doing your laundry. That typically doesn't happen. People take their laundry very, very seriously here. And no one is gonna take your time slot. On top of that, make sure that you are cleaning out the lint and leaving the room better than you came into it because it is a common space and it is taken very seriously to keep everything clean. The next topic is kind of crazy to be mentioning. And again, just something so minuscule that you wouldn't consider because of how normal it is in the States. But the way you throw out your garbage here in Sweden is totally different than the way you throw out your garbage in the US. In the US, you can recycle, you have either a recycling bin or a garbage bin and you separate it that way. But here it is so much more complex. I never thought that the topic of garbage would be interesting. I even mentioned this to you guys and showed you guys our garbage room again in one of my other vlogs. But I'll just quickly go over how they do garbage here and why they do it that way. Typically everybody here will compost, food scraps, things like that, banana peels. You will throw them into a brown compost bag that you can get for free, usually in your garbage room, and you throw those into a specific garbage. But when it comes to recycling, you will separate everything from paper, plastic, glass. There will be an area for cans, tinder, and I'm sure I'm missing a few, but you will separate everything within all of those groups. And then there is a final group for miscellaneous things that maybe don't fall into that category, genuine junk. I did a little bit of research on why they do the garbage this way, and it was really awesome to read that as of right now, Sweden only has 1% of all waste in landfills. 52% of all waste is burned and that creates energy for homes here in Sweden. And the other 47% is all recycled. There were numbers saying that a million homes get heating from this because of the way that they handle their waste. Sweden even imports waste from other countries to fuel their power plants. Countries will pay Sweden to take their garbage in because it's cheaper for them to 
give it to Sweden rather than throw it in a landfill and pay for those fees. I will have all of that information linked down for you guys. If you have any input on it, I would love to learn a little bit more. Again, never thought garbage would be this interesting of a topic, but make sure that you are separating all of your waste. You're being mindful of it because it's a simple thing that you can do to make a huge difference. At home, I do recycle, but again, it's not as intricate as it is here in Sweden. The final difference I'm gonna mention to you guys, again, is so small and we didn't know this until about a week ago when the nicest man at the grocery store let us know, but if you are putting your produce in plastic bags, you have to pay for those plastic bags at the checkout. So instead of spending that extra five, 10 crown, whatever it is at the grocery store, which would equate to maybe a dollar fifty, a dollar, something like that, just wasting money. Make sure you are grabbing for those paper bags that you can put your produce in because not only is it gonna be free for you, but you're gonna be able to use those bags again as your composting bags. Those are the rest of the differences that I can think of right now. I'm sure as time goes on, I will have so many more for you guys, but I wanted to mention these ones because again, they are important to understand as well as beneficial to know if you are making the journey over here. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I do plan on making another one of these videos, if not a few more. As always, please make sure to follow me on Instagram, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and if you are already, it is truly, truly appreciated, and I will talk to you soon.